Hi, my name is Mike. I am one of the senior education consultants here at the Profs, as well as a tutor in maths, physics, and computer science. So I am working really, really hard to expand my repertoire in other subjects such as chemistry, which is something I'm going to be talking about today in relation to Oxford. How do we get into Oxford University to study chemistry? Um, unsurprisingly, with a lot of other subjects, it's one of the best places in the world to go to to study this subject. So it's understandable that actually getting into Oxford for chemistry is quite challenging or really, really competitive. Doesn't mean you shouldn't work at it though, but just to give an idea of numbers really here, um, in the last academic cycle, that was in the 2024-2025 academic year, we are looking at a 20% admissions rate for this course. If you compare that to how well we're doing at the profs, 55% of our Oxford candidates uh, ended up getting into the university of their dreams. So we reckon we can do a little bit better than the national average here. So if you like what you're hearing in this video, um, please give it a like and subscribe um, and get into contact with us with using the information below. In the meantime, here are my top five tips on how to get onto this very prestigious course. So tip number one is a really, really important one. We can't even think of going to Oxford unless your grades are really, really high. In fact, with most offers that are at Oxford and Cambridge, you're looking at two A stars and an A. And in this case, you're wanting two A stars, one in chemistry, and ideally really one in mathematics, you do want to, or another science. And even better, I mean, if you can get better grades than that, fantastic, but that is an absolute minimum. If we're not getting there, it's gonna be highly unlikely that you're gonna be getting onto this course. So really make sure in that first year, where you're having to get evidence of your grades, that you're working really, really hard, you're going above and beyond your subject, so that when your teachers on your UCAS application say what your predicted grades are, and what you're likely to get, it's realistic. Um, and it's something that the university can truly believe when they look at the rest of your application. Um, it, I should also mention as well, there's a really, really common mistake with people going into science degrees. Um, I know some people that like to go into science degrees whilst ignoring the fact that actually there's a massive mathematical underpinning to what you're doing. It's actually really not. I mean, you would have seen hints of this if you'd done a little bit of physical chemistry um, or a stoichiometry, for instance. Uh, in those instances, you have a set of equations which you are having to muddle around with. You have a set procedure. But when you get to university level, things become a little bit less rigid in those mechanisms, um, knowing actually how you calculate quantities, how do you calculate the number of moles of a substance um, from a particular kind of reaction. You start to incorporate other subjects into chemistry and it becomes almost very interdisciplinary. So don't forget also with those grades to boost on your mathematical ability. And as I said in a few other videos, if you really want to do that for competitive universities, take a look at admissions tests for maths actually as a bit of an inspiration for this. Obviously as a chemist you don't need to go all the way with that, but I recommend maybe looking at a few questions from a step paper one, just to give you an idea as to a place to start if you are coming towards the end of year 12. Saying this, assuming that you are really, really good or really, really strong with your understanding of chemistry, you want to be thinking about actually how strong your personal statement is. That's actually with my second top tip uh, for getting onto a course like this. Make sure that your personal statement is robust and showcases all of your strengths as much as possible. I usually start off with Oxbridge candidates very early. Um, ideally, the earlier that you, you sort of start with, you know, pre preparation for these things, the better, but usually September or October of when you're starting is an ideal time because there's so many things you need to think about when going into Oxford or Cambridge. In particular, uh, with the fact that actually you because have changed their application system. You're no longer writing like the one essay. You've got individual, th three individual essay questions that cover the same aspects of a personal statement before, but we've got to do a little bit of work to actually see whether we're talking about the academic reading, whether we're talking about our supercurriculars. If we have work experience, does that relate to chemistry? Um, maybe in that sense you would have had the intuition to go and do like a research project or something in the middle of the summer with uh, Into STEM, uh, for instance. They're a really good organization to look at early, but you wanna make sure when you're writing your personal statement, it's robust, 
it's got a, a very, very solid academic underpinning and it really demonstrates and showcases your passion for studying chemistry. So my next top tip in getting into Oxford for chemistry is make sure that you have the practical experience to back up your passion for the subject. Um, I've already mentioned the possibility of getting into research during the summer, so uh, into STEM is a great way of looking at getting research experience already with universities, working in a laboratory with top academics uh, across the country, and Cambridge are also involved in that, so definitely make sure, uh, Cambridge and Oxford even, are involved in that, so make sure you definitely have a look at some of the experiences that ha they have on offer. There is also uh, the Nuffield uh, research internships that are on offer as well. They offer very similar things in a very similar style. Um, but if you weren't actually getting research experience and you still want to develop your ability to carry out experiments, which you need to know how to do anyway to be able to pass your practical endorsements, uh, as well as the fact that you have to talk about specific experiments on the tests, is actually look at doing chemistry interactive simulations. So FET is a really good example, P-H-E-T or um, looking into MEL chemistry. Uh, these are really, really great ways of actually simulating your understanding of chemistry. In fact, um, because I actually, you know, just as a little bit of a side thing, I like to play a lot of um, games on Steam and I actually get a lot of educational games. I'm pretty sure I've seen in a few places uh, in terms of simulations, um, games that allow you to be able to simulate chemical experiments pretty accurately and to what actually goes on. And so if you're more of a visual learner um, and you have a little bit of limited experience or limited access to a laboratory, that might be a way for you to be able to um, uh, sort of learn about these things. I might not write it in a personal statement, but it's still really, really important in getting those top grades for the A-level, which you certainly do need if you want to be able to go for Oxford. But ideally, if you get research experience in an actual laboratory, there's nothing that can really beat it. <laughs> My next tip is the same with any um, Oxford or Cambridge application, is make sure that you prepare for the interview. Now, quite uniquely for this course, actually, you don't have it, an admissions test. It's one of the only few courses at Oxford and Cambridge that doesn't have one for chemistry. That does not mean they won't test you on your knowledge of chemistry in the middle of an interview. So one thing you're going to have to do even before that is make sure that you completely understand your personal statement inside and out. Um, they will be asking you questions about your application in general, maybe just to expand on some of the things that you've written, um, which is a good thing for them to do because it gives you the chance to be able to say absolutely everything about yourself that they feel like they need to know. Um, at the same time, um, they may be asking you about like specific sort of chemistry questions in contexts that are a little bit outside of the A-level. So they might introduce you to a new molecule, and they might ask you sort of uh, basically whether something is ionically bonded or whether there are covalent bonds uh, like within the molecule. Um, maybe they might ask you to make some comments about its volatility uh, in the middle of a gas. Um, there was even a question that basically said, how many particles of air are there in this room, actually? If you are worried about the kinds of questions you get there, uh, there are books out there that have basically give a whole list of everything that's been asked in an Oxford or Cambridge interview for Cambridge. Sorry, for chemistry even. Too many C words. So make sure you have a look at what's already been asked to get sort of an idea of what you could be given. Um, but I also say in relation to that, it's handy to know who's going to be interviewing you. Um, I heard of somebody that went for biology um, for Cambridge that basically had an interview with them. They knew they were um, an etymologist um, and they basically were asking about um, something specific to do with the nature of butterflies at the very end of the interview. I'm not saying that you have to do that, but it definitely helped to build rapport with, with the interviewer, um, given that they knew already who it was going to be. But interview practice, don't leave it late. Record yourself going through some of these uh, tough questions or somebody asking you them. Make sure, and I'm not doing too well with this today, make sure you sit up and you smile and you, and you look directly at them. Show them that you are having fun with this. Take your time to consider the questions and really see that as a fun opportunity to be able to engage in the wider academic community that Oxford has on offer. And my final top tip for this one, like with every single one of the other courses that I've talked about for Oxford and Cambridge, 
is make sure that you get the help of a tutor that can work with you one on one on all of the different aspects of your application. Um, particularly given that without a tutor's help, especially our help, as um, admissions rates for this course are quite low. Um, and there are lots of different things to think about with this one. There is a personal statement that's get, there's getting good teacher references from different people. There's making sure you've got the right reading. Uh, looking into the reading lists of, of different universities is going to help with this. Oxford certainly has one for chemistry, so definitely take a look. Um, getting the right super curriculars. There's a lot to juggle on top of also preparing for an interview there. With a tutor, if that sounds like a lot, it is. With a tutor, we can help break that down. <laughs> we can help look specifically at your application, say what you're doing well, what you need more assistance with to really maximize your potential, really maximize your chances of getting in. So if you're really serious about getting to Oxford for this course, don't waste your opportunity and get a tutor. And thankfully, at the Props, we've got so many tutors that are Oxford or Cambridge graduates, um, particularly experts in chemistry as well, that can really help you get onto courses like this and get you into that right mindset. Everything I said in this video is useful, but there's so much else you need to learn. We can offer those services. If you like what you've heard, at the very least today, uh, in this video, please like and subscribe. Maybe share it with some of your other friends as well that you know are applying to chemistry for Oxford, or maybe even like somewhere similar if they're trying to decide on a few choices uh, at this time of year. Um, if you have any top tips on how to get into Oxford for chemistry, Take a look at our comment section, maybe write a few tips yourself as to, you know, how else do you think um, you can get into Oxford for chemistry? What else makes a really, really great uh, candidate? We'd love to be able to hear from you and we, we'd be very welcome to respond to what you have to say. Um, but if you are definitely certain you want to work with us, just to hone the point home, um, you can take a look at the information on screen right now and um, you can follow those details. We can get in touch with you very, very shortly and get you on track to succeed in applying for a course like this. Um, but until then, we wish you the best of luck with your application and the best of luck with your studies. Take care.